Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here with us today uh, for the first of our Adapting and Innovating Beyond COVID-19 webinar series. Today's webinar is going to be focused on digital marketing for small businesses. My name is Thereyal Naeem, and I'm a program coordinator with Access Community Capital Fund. And Access is a registered charity with the aim for everyone in our community to have the opportunity to reach their full potential through sustainable employment and self-employment. If you would like to learn more about us and what we do, please visit our website at accessccf.com. So before we get started, I just wanted to cover some housekeeping items. Um, so if you're new to Zoom, um, at the bottom of your, there's a menu bar where you can see uh, a Q&A and a chat box. Um, for the and you can also see like a mute button and stop video. Um, so for the purposes of this webinar, all attendees will be muted um, just to give the best sound quality. Um, but if you do have any questions throughout the webinar uh, for the speakers, please um, write them in to the Q and A chat box, and um, I will pose those questions to the speakers. Uh, at the end of the webinar during our discussion period. Uh, and we're gonna do our very best to try to get through most of the questions. Um, so uh, just being cognizant of the time uh, restrictions that we do have. Um, so if you have any other questions related to technical issues or anything like that, please don't use the Q&A box, just use the um, chat box and someone will be able to kind of try to assist you with that. So um, I'm going to introduce our presenters now. So we have with us Jose Ignacio Urena and Lisbeth de la Cruz. Jose is entrepreneurial by nature and hungry to drive growth to companies and teams. He has experience leading, managing uh, content marketing, social media, and search engine marketing projects from briefing to execution. And Lisbeth is a marketing professional, an entrepreneur with more than eight years of experience and a passion for content creation, social media, online advertising, and all things digital. Uh, Lisbeth is a co-founder of Follow Brown's Digital Agency, which is a digital marketing agency, and is a founder of Palmeria Blue Jewelry. So uh, at this time, I'm going to hand over the floor to Jose and Lisbeth for today's presentation. Yeah, um, actually, um, I feel that we should first of all thank Axis for this great initiative, uh, for being so proactive in starting this webinar series so we can have uh, conversations that are so important for us as small business owners, uh, things that we should know. Uh, we want to know how, what are the trends right now. We want answers to some of our questions and we want to know actually um, what should be our priority right now in our business. So thank you guys for doing this and uh, it's a, a pleasure for us to be sharing that, this information with you. Um, I'll let Jose introduce us and uh, tell you a bit more about, uh, about us. Okay guys, so let's rock and roll. First of all, um, so basically the objective of today's webinar would be to share with you some of the marketing initiatives that you guys can start implementing right away on your businesses, even though we are facing challenging times. So these are strategies that would also actually recommendations and strategies that will not also let you adapt to the current situation, but also execute some new things. Um, so yeah, so Lisbeth and I, we are the co-founders of Follow Brands Digital Agency. As Raya said, is a marketing agency, it's a marketing agency here in Toronto. Um, we have 15 years of combined experience in digital marketing and all marketing related uh, activities. And we have worked with over 30 or more than 30 uh, businesses, small businesses and also uh, big CPG brands and from other sectors uh, during the last six, seven years. And we want to start guys with saying that this is not business as usual. I mean, we need to be clear on that and we just need to wrap our, our head around that. This is not business as usual, but it is still business, okay? So we still have a business to run. We still have a business to try just, you know, uh, get across all this craziness and we still have a business that we would like to actually be successful so this is just another challenge in what is the ongoing challenging time for entrepreneurs so we just want to to make sure that we understand that because it's not it's not sane it's not safe for you either and it's not the proper mindset 
for you to think that it is business as usual, right? Uh, I know that sometimes we would like just to, to say that this is going to pass in a couple of days, a couple of weeks, and maybe it will, but it is definitely not business as usual. Um, and also something very uh, important coming from two marketers is to highlight that this is not a marketing opportunity to capitalize on. This is not a marketing opportunity guys, for you to take advantage of. Instead, this is a, about understanding uh, your companies, your products role uh, in your customers and consumers' life and how you can be helpful. Helpful is a keyword for today's presentation and a keyword for everything that guys that you need to ex be executing during this pandemic. So here is a quick, uh, snapshot to what we understand would be the three phases that businesses and entrepreneurs are going to be um, facing during the, the next couple of weeks or months. I mean, maybe you guys already started, but at least for us, the first thing was just trying to survive, just thinking we were losing some businesses, you know, we were adapting so quickly and things were happening so, so fast and so quick that the first thing and the most important thing for businesses a couple of weeks ago and many from other businesses right now is to survive. That was the only strategy, survival mode. So basically that included, you know, making the top decisions, uh, looking at our financials or how long can we actually, you know, run the business before uh, being without cash. After that, then we move to adapt. Okay, this is the reality. It's not going away, even if I wish it would go away right away. How do we adapt to this new reality? How do we do it? So basically, do we need to change our business model? Do we need to basically reduce our service hours or reduce our costs? How do we talk to suppliers about supporting each other during this challenging time? Basically, it's what a strategy as a business we need to take to make sure that we can adapt and continue providing services and products to our consumers. And to add to that, um, we can't be in denial right now. We need to be at this adapted to it, like at that stage, because right now we definitely know that the situation, we wish uh, it would be over by tomorrow, but that's not the case. So we need to say, hey, this is what's going on and start making some decisions and see that the customer has changed. The customer is now more at home. There are like uh, some trends that we will be revealing in this presentation. So please take note of that. So you can start reviewing what type of strategies are good for your business based on those new customer trends. And um, finally, guys, is reinvent. And this is basically the transformational part of the phase, right? It could be happening right now, or it could happen in a couple of weeks or months where you guys realize, okay, the market, and to this best point, the customer is not the same customer that I was serving three months ago, right? The market is behaving completely different from what it was behaving a couple of weeks or months ago. Well, and to give you an example of that, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we were still buying tickets for big events that were going on maybe this month or maybe next month. How many events like big business conferences were canceled or maybe some, some of them uh, were transferred into a, this virtual setting that we're evolving now. So uh, the, that's, that's the new reality. And you have seen it with your own, uh, with your own uh, behaviors as a customer yourself. You might, might be more now by more online and changing what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's, that's another top decision. I would say that around, we, both we survive and reinvent, those two will be your key decisions, right? How do you survive, but also not only adapting, but after everything happens and everything ends and it's back to the new normal, how do you reinvent yourself for future success? And the key element here, the key element, the constant here, is that you need to communicate to your customers. When you're trying to survive, you need to be communicating with your customers. When you're adapting, you need to communicate that to your customers. And also when you reinvent whatever thing new that you're going to do, you need to tell that to your customers. And that's the marketing piece right there. So how do you adapt, guys? How, what are you doing to adapt right now? So that's where we come with these four key recommendations. Number one is to look for opportunities. Um, 
first of all, we want to say that, you know, in crisis uh, is where opportunities actually happen. Uh, number two is how do we connect with consumers right now? The way we were connecting with our customers, the way we were connecting with potential customers three weeks ago, one month ago, it's not the same way that we should be communicating and trying to connect right now. Uh, number three would be adapting your messaging. Everything has changed and your messaging needs to change as well. And finally, how do you continue to optimize because things are happening, are changing so rapidly that that you need basically to be optimizing, you know, testing and optimizing uh, ongoing. And just to understand first the look for opportunities piece here, we need to go to data. We need to understand what's happening. We need to dive deep into research, just trying to get an understanding on how the market is actually changing and how our customer is changing. So uh, first of all, we want to uh, provide you guys here with a uh, very up to date, very fresh uh, uh, insight on what behaviors are your customers, are consumers sharing on social media? What are they posting? What are their behaviors, their new behaviors telling us about um, how what they expect from brands? So basically, right now, most of us are posting positive habits. We are trying to to share with people a strength and encouragement. Uh, we are trying to bring the outside in and also sharing our new lifestyle online. And the new recipe that we cook. The new recipe that we cook, right? And also learning and making. So in that order, that's basically the type of images, the type of posts that consumers are sharing on social media. So when we see that data, what does it say, right? We need to know what, are, what is this data trying to tell us as a marketer, as a business owner? So the opportunity we understand is that is that we need to be reflecting the value uh, as a company, the value that the consumer is expecting from you. We need to be reflecting. We need to be reflecting those positive values. We need to be reflecting those positive emotions. We need to be reflecting that we are um, that we are sensitive. That's basically what consumer is expecting right now, and that's what we need to provide. Also, we need to be supporting cons uh, customers and consumers with positive and helpful habits and tips and tricks just to help them to adapt to this new reality. And this is key, guys. We need to create new online experiences, right? Because look at how they are trying to bring, we are trying to bring the outside in. We are trying to find new lifestyles online and we are learning and making. That's basically creating new experiences. And we need to be, you know, responsible of creating new experiences for our customers. 43% of, of consumers and customers find it reassuring when they hear from you, when they listen from you, and they are expecting to listen from you. And 40% want to know how companies are responding to the coronavirus pandemic. That's key. Because I know that maybe we were thinking that this is not a right, mo right moment to speak, right? This is not a right moment to, to, to be posting things out there. This is the right moment to add value. This is the right moment to reassure our customers that we are here and that we are not ignoring the situation. And that's what they are expecting for us. So what's the opportunity here? Basically ongoing communication, right? Making sure that we're communicating to our consumers and customers via social media, video, and uh, email marketing. So WhatsApp, a big one here. Um, Lisbeth and I, we are heavily, heavy users of WhatsApp, and we understand the importance that it has been taken lately, right? But this insight even surprised us <laughs> because WhatsApp has been the social media app that has been increasing the most during the last couple of weeks. Not TikTok, not Facebook, not Instagram, WhatsApp. 40% increase in usage during the last couple of weeks. And basically the opportunity here, guys, is for you, first of all, to ask your customer if they are on WhatsApp or if they are willing to be on WhatsApp to be, you know, uh, in order to listen from you. And we encourage you to create a WhatsApp group to engage with your customer. 
why uh, recently you were thinking about that because you're a personal trainer who's now doing virtual classes mm -hmm. is not communicating with Jose. Cool. Jose was like, hey, don't you have a WhatsApp group where you can send me the links to the classes and you can just let me know, give me notifications and what's going on with that. So it's so easy to create a WhatsApp group. You can send notifications, you can send updates, you can send uh, so much information about your product, your brand. And you don't know if your customer is even asking you for like waiting for you to do it, like almost asking you for you to do it. So it's, uh, it's something to think about. It's so easy to, to, to do and it's a great strategy. And the data is right there, right? Consumers are using WhatsApp. Uh, so here are three key points, guys. 77% of people say they would like to see brands talk about how they are being helpful. 75% of people would like to see brands informed about their efforts. And 70% would like to see brands offer a reassuring tone. Basically, communicate, be present, be helpful. And here's another uh, interesting one, is that Facebook advertising costs has been decreasing like crazy, huh? 35 to 50% decline in the average cost per thousand impressions. That's unprecedented. So basically right now, we are able to advertise as a small business owners to advertise on Facebook for less money. So we can reach basically more people that maybe we weren't reaching before, and we can do that at a cheaper cost. Uh, and here is an important piece of insight, and uh, is that just 8% of consumers expect brands to cut advertising. 92% of your cons consumers or customers are expecting you to continue advertising as long as it is um, reassuring and you're being helpful. Okay, so here we have some information that uh, Nielsen prepared in terms of the stages that uh, the consumer behavior has been changing. So we have seen that we have gone through different stages. We saw, we all saw all the pictures on social media, people stockpiling things, toilet paper, all that craziness. And now we are with, we see this triangle here in restricted living. So we see that definitely people are being more aware of the, like whenever they have to go out, they are more aware. If they can cut a visit, they do it. If uh, we can buy something online, we buy something online. So this is something that it's giving us the information of what people are doing and uh, we can take decisions on that. And we see that this living in a new normal is the next stage where people will eventually start doing the activities they used to do, but definitely uh, we see uh, a, big, uh, a big shift on, uh, like, on the supply chains and the use of e-commerce, for example, and, and hygiene practices. But on the use of e-commerce, there's something really interesting there because e-commerce was booming already before all this happened. So definitely the ones that were already selling online had already an advantage. But if you are not selling online, this is definitely the time to start and to start thinking about how to do it. Because at the end of the day, after this situation happens, like after this situation ends, e-commerce will continue to be boom booming because people will definitely avoid uh, avoid going to, to places to buy things. So it's an opportunity here. Here we're going to show you a couple of examples of how people are doing this online transformation on their companies. For example, this board game cafe and lounge used to make all their money, of course, like from selling cafe and, you know, selling food, snacks, and the board games was just something to attract people to go there. But now they are selling the online games and uh, it's something that, you know, they're make, making money out of it. So at the end of the day, this could be their survival stage or who knows if they will adapt and continue doing that. And maybe that's, uh, that's how they'll, they'll change their business model. Who knows if me, even after they can open up their cafe, they can still say, hey, this is my new, my new, my new, uh, uh, my new um, uh, revenue source. So this is something that uh, can start giving us ideas and uh, things that we can do. And of course, like local coffee shops are selling their coffee online. Uh, and this is something pretty interesting that's happening with the hair salons and beauty salons. 
they are starting to sell products online and uh, they are starting to, uh, for example, if they're selling the product online, what they're doing is with their content on social media, they are showing people how to groom themselves, how to cut their hair at home. They're showing people how to, um, how to put on their beauty mask uh, to do like a beauty session and also selling like a lot of self-care kits uh, with stuff that they will need like to pamper the, themselves and take care of themselves. Because right now uh, people are spending more and more time at home, but also there's this need of, uh, of feeling a bit uh, comforted. So it's something that, uh, that has helped them like still uh, continue, continue, be, continue to sell, even though they don't have their salon open right now. Uh, with the restaurant industry, we have seen so many interesting things. And like one of them, it's this uh, food kits that they have started doing. So they have, for, for example, put all the ingredients so you can prepare them at home or for you to assemble them at home if they're already prepared. Uh, with this coffee supplier, uh, something really interesting as well, they are still supporting the coffee shops that buy from them. And uh, yeah, we have a small audio here, so a quick audio so for you to see how it's happening. Let's hear. A coffee wholesaler is letting customers support their local cats through the crisis. When you buy a bag of beans from Roasted Brown, you'll be given the option to nominate a coffee shop so they can get a cut of the price. Ferg Brown came up with the idea when their online sales shot through the roof. He told us he wanted to give something back. So the idea came about when we pretty much lost all of our wholesale business um, in about 24 hours and instantly started seeing our online sales um, increase kind of rapidly, I guess, as people were working at home and um, freaking out about where they were going to get their coffee now. And then after the two weeks, we decided that we'd do it as a our shop is their shop type thing. And we promoted this thing where if you bought coffee on our online shop, named the cafe that you normally drink the coffee in every day they will get the sale of the beans to that customer and we will get the sale of the beans to the wholesale account for the coffee shop okay so as you can hear there they lost most of their well the, all their wholesale business so what they did is they saw the discount code with the coffee shops they were selling to and when people are buying from them now they can get those coffee shops can get a markup like a, a bit of a uh, of that per, a percentage of the, those sales. So uh, that's something that is helping those coffee shops as well. A coffee. Okay, so another good example is uh, Stay Home Toronto. You should all definitely go on Instagram right now and follow them and go to the website. I think it's a great resource uh, for you to actually support small businesses and uh, small, support small businesses in your area. Uh, if you're in Toronto, they are covering East Side, Midtown, and like, downtown area as well. I think they will be expanding in the future. Uh, but also, as a small business owners, and that's the reason that we're here today, um, it's a, a, a bank of ideas. You can see what people are doing to shift uh, their strategy now in these new times. Uh, for example, look at this Pilates studio doing the virtual classes. You see this uh, hair studio doing this, uh, look, doing this tutorials live on how to do the haircuts. Um, so there are really good ideas and you should explore that. So, okay, messaging is really important right now because we are at sensitive times where we have to be really careful what we say and how we say it. Okay, so with the message, let's think about the audience and let's think about if we're actually giving someone a benefit, if we're helping with what we have to offer. Uh, with the copy, we should also review what type of, uh, of language are we using and if uh, what we're saying is having empathy uh, at the top. Also with the creative, uh, we need to think if there's something insensitive, if there's something that uh, people won't like to see right now, and the, with the offer, also to think that these are difficult times and think that if we're doing something fair and uh, actually we're selling responsibly. But uh, we're, there's so many marketing strategies that we could use, but at this time, we have prioritized on what we think is uh, the best way to go. Uh, things that are pretty basic uh, that we should be covering. 
So uh, these are SEO, social media, customer service, and online events that we'll be, we will be expanding more on those soon. But we have a question for you guys and uh, let's hit the, the chat section. And please let us know uh, what do you think is the most relevant strategy right now for your business? Um, just let's uh, take a guess and uh, let's give you a couple of seconds for you to put some answers on there. So go guys to the chat box and reply back with your answer. What is the most relevant strategy that as business you guys can take right now? The most relevant strategy for your customers, for your business, which one is it right now? We want to, before we, we move on, we want to see the responses on the chat section. More? There you go. Okay. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Connecting to customers and streamlining the online buy process. Excellent. Staying connected. Great. We show, no, it's not from the yeah. list you, we showed. It's which one you think uh, is it, the most relevant strategy. In general. Over communication, social media utilization, going online. You guys are yeah. on spot. But there's something else. Come on, we're going to give you 20 more seconds, and we are going to count when we are at 10 seconds. Which is or what is the most relevant strategy right now? Let me know when we are in 10 seconds. Okay, now, nine, eight, seven, Survival strategy. six, I like that. five, four, three, two, <laughs> one. Content marketing strategies or viable keeping your presence digitally. Excellent. There's something else. I mean, all of those are right answers. So you can take note of those that you guys just shot in there, right? Boom. Okay, let's see the answer. Ready? <laughs> okay. So the answer, uh, it's empathy because, um, yeah, all those strategies that you mentioned are definitely on point, but something that we want to have, like even on top of that, on top of that, empathy needs to be there because these are times where we need to show people that we care and it has to be genuine. Like we actually need to just take a step back and think about how can we support people how can we help them if they need my product how can I make my product available for them easier for them can I deliver the product can I make this uh, an easier process for them to get it online what can I do so guys basically empathy would allow you to do so many things because to this bad point when you guys are thinking with empathy in the top then you are having a human approach human first approach right even not customer first approach, a human first approach when you put empathy on top because it would allow you to do more collaborations, to fair pricing, to have relevant and engaging content, hassle-free customer service because you're going to be putting yourself on your customer shoes. All right, so here we have some, um, some stats, uh, really interesting um, trends that we see. We took this information from Google Trends. So if you want to go there, go ahead to, and go, go to Google Trends, and you can start typing in the keywords that you're interested in, like keywords from your industry. And uh, you can see what are the changes. For example, you can, uh, this are the past 90 days, but you can uh, put that uh, to our most recent date or farther. So yeah, play around with that tool. Uh, but here we have the most interesting stats in terms of um, what people are searching. And here, this can give you some insight in terms of what you can do with your brand. So here we have seen that well, with delivery, okay, this is the yellow that you see there, right? So you see this is booming. And the rest is, uh, it was just like the restaurants near me and takeout. It has, it has just stayed the same. Well, it has dropped, but it, I, not right now, it's not, it's not even relevant because people are just focused on staying home and they want people to deliver for them. So guys, just going back there. So if you, some of you have access to your website, just make sure that you update your keywords to make sure that you are, you know, adding delivery 
delivery available and all those words more frequently now because those are the keywords that people are expecting or are trying to find. Yeah, because one thing to note is that maybe you are offering delivery, but maybe Google doesn't know. And what we exactly. mean by Google doesn't <laughs> exactly. know is that Google is not indexing your information yeah. and they are not letting people know then. Yeah. So it's a chain. And at the end of the day, what we want is that Google knows because Google is a great source and people, are, you know, it's the largest if Google engine. knows, your customers will know. <laughs> exactly. So make sure you do that. And also we see that uh, people are looking for homemade things. We're looking for recipes, how-tos, DIY. So this is a great opportunity for you to get into that conversation. What we mean by this is to start creating content. Start creating content. Start using those keywords for Google to know that you're creating that content. And take advantage of this opportunity. And you know, sometimes small business owners and entrepreneurs, we would think that we don't have access to data. And all right, we don't have access to fancy, you know, market research and, you know, super uh, uh, deep insights. But we do have access to so many tools that allow us to get some data and get a sense, you know, of what's the post right now. Google Trends is free. You just need to type, to, uh, as Lisbeth mentioned, Google Trends and go and, uh, you know, type your keywords. And there you go. Now we can see that consumers are typing for more home delivery or typing for how-tos. So then we can deliver based on that. Yeah, and also t keep in mind that those are keywords. So make sure that you are using those keywords. And yeah, feel free to use all these tools because this is free, this is for you, and let's take advantage of, uh, of the tools that we have. Because right now there's so much uncertainty. There's so many things that we don't know, but we have to rely on what the trends and the consumers are doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Things are changing, so these type of tools are really important for us to follow uh, what the customer is doing, uh, how things are changing, and make decisions upon that. Okay, so something really important is uh, search ending optimization now, and this is such a broad topic, uh, but for this context, uh, for the context of this presentation, what we mean is just to uh, to have your website clean with the inf net relevant information, as we said, like if you're doing delivery, emphasize on those keywords, emphasize on the key things that you are doing or you are, you're, are start doing, um, so, um, so people can actually know what you're offering them and see how you are adding value. On Google My Business, this is something so important. If you update Google My Business, Google actually takes that into consideration for their search results. So if you have new hours, if you're delivering, if it's only delivery, like let people know how things have changed because things are changing for the past couple of weeks. You're making new decisions. Maybe you decide to open and have special hours. So let people know what you're doing. So there's always communication. Remember the other chart that we, sh that we show you? Always communication. And of course, uh, the online reviews are really important all the time but now it's uh it's really a good time to rely on that as well social media it's something that uh people are using social media more now so let's connect let's educate uh let's let them know if we have any any communication that we have uh definitely should be on social media so not do not rely only on one on one source like, okay, I, I'm offering delivery. Let me put this on social media, but um, I'll forget about Google My Business. No, like, let's try to be, let's try to create an omni-channel strategy and let's try to put everything on all the, on the, all the different channels that we have available. So, for example, we could update that information on Google My Business, but we can also let people know on social media, but as that hair salon is also creating content and helping people uh, understand how they can do things at home now, we can inform, but we can at the same time educate them. We can like create how-to videos, we can create tutorials, monitor the situation, um, because at the end of the day, this is information that could be relevant now, but we don't know what could happen uh, in the next couple of weeks. And also engage, that's a golden rule. And what we mean by engage is keep in touch with your customers, uh, let them know that you care, uh, find out if they received their order properly, uh, if everything is okay with them, keep engaging with them on social media. So guys, here are some things that for God's sake you need to avoid right now. 
I mean, if you're on social media and you're running ads or just posting organic content, make sure that you are staying away from posting mass gathering or events posts. Uh, also, it's not smart for you to, you know, be driving traffic to your store if you are not if you're not an, a non-essential business. Uh, if you're not an essential business. Also, um, when you're choosing your pictures, when you're choosing your images, uh, make sure that you're not showing people violating the social distancing, the physical distancing rules, you know. Uh, also check your captions to make sure that they are relevant and that they are not insensitive. Also your call to actions. Uh, the call to actions, I mean, uh, visit us today or, you know, book a, a meeting now. Like you need to check those call to action to make sure that they are relevant are, and also are aligned with the reality. Uh, change those call to action for uh, book an online event, book an online meeting, you know, or send us an email or learn more. Like you need, you need to make sure that you're driving people to e-store. Um, also keep an eye on words and phrases that could come across insensitive. Uh, right now, there are many things that we were saying a couple of weeks ago that right now, maybe for the next couple of weeks or maybe two months, whatever, might come across insensitive, right? Not, it's not like things are going to be like that all the time, but right now it might come across insensitive. Um, uh, avoid posting any misinformation, you know, like always go to the, to the official sites before you post something. Uh, avoid sounding too silly. Right now is a time for you to educate, not for you to be uh, being sell first, right? So educate consumer because it's a time to keep consumers happy, not to avoid them, to scare them. And also avoid posting something irrelevant to the time. And uh, what we mean by this is also, uh, we have known people that uh, they start to um, create their content calendar at, way ahead of time. So maybe you created your content calendar two months ago, and maybe now, uh, tomorrow will come a post saying something that is to totally irrelevant to the situation right now. So take a look at all your social media posts and like what you have on your calendar. Take a look at it and see if it's still relevant and make adjustments. Okay, so here we have a couple of ideas on what to post during COVID because uh, we have talked to many small business owners and uh, we have heard this question a lot. People are kind of frozen in terms of communication, like, okay, I wanna say something, but what can I say? Here we have a couple of ideas. So you can be positive. You can, uh, for example, express gratitude, share motivational sayings, and uh, share, some, share some happiness because these are times where people definitely need to laugh and have some hope be helpful, share relevant tips. Uh, for example, you can share um, things that can help someone be more productive, how to have a better routine. Uh, restaurants are sharing their popular recipes. Like even though like we cannot go to the restaurant right now, you know, maybe we can do the recipe at home. And that definitely gives us uh, that same feeling that when we were to, uh, at the restaurant. So we can still be in touch with the brand and feel that the brand is giving us something, giving us something of value, making yeah. us smile, helping us. You know, we mentioned guys, right now, for many people might be asking themselves, uh, should I be posting something? If you don't have anything good to say, don't say it, all right? You, you shut your mouth and don't say it. But if you are able to think on behalf of your customer, have empathy and come up with, you know, helpful tips, then go and say it. If you're able to add value, go and say it. If you're able to inform and educate and be helpful, go and say it. I mean, and this is a golden move right now, is to be helpful. Uh, you can host an Instagram Live or YouTube Live or Facebook Live, you know, to, to educate consumers around a tip. You can post a how-tos and do-it-yourself videos. There are many things that you can think of that many of these uh, examples may weren't thinking a couple of weeks ago, and now they are able because they have empathy to actually deliver good content and be transparent. I mean, being transparent is going to get to get you a long way here, guys. Uh, look at this uh, uh, fashion designer from Toronto. She has started uh, 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 making masks for the frontline workers, and she's basically sharing through videos or her Instagram account um, of the process, basically the process and being transparent and open about it. And actually, that's a great way of you have uh, connecting with consumers. 
and share your own experiences. This one, Tanya Taylor, is a big fashion brand. But they said, hey guys, it is challenging right now. It is challenging to keep our business, you know, running. And that's, that's a very good thing to, to share your perspective of things. And that's making you relatable because at the end of the day, if that's how you feel. Like you don't have to hide it. You can also share how, how you feel with people and yeah. they can have empathy with you. You can have empathy with them. And that's how you create a community. And it's okay to have a sense of humor, but if you don't feel, you know, dry about it, if you don't feel confident about posting something humorous, then don't do it. But it's okay to have a sense of humor. And the reason why, you know, we just uh, uh, flagged it out is because maybe you know that your uh, user, your audience might not like something humorous, so don't post it. But it, it is okay. And here you have some examples. You can find a thousand of memes that are relevant, that are not, you know, insensitive, that actually are funny and positive. And if you can do it, then do it. You can actually even educate through uh, humor. Yeah, absolutely. And here we want to share with you super quickly the six proven content formats that we have seen that are performing the best right now uh, during this uh, COVID-19 crisis. And stories are booming. Okay, if you want to post in one place, and in one place only, post on stories. The live, the broadcastings are great. Graphics, we see now more graphics than ever because it's a great way of adding color pop and being positive and cheerful uh, uh, of the content you want to show there. Also videos, animations, and photography there. Customer services uh, is always the number one, but right now should be your priority at all costs. Uh, you can do so many things to engage with your customers. Like for example, create a separate Facebook group to let them know uh, how they, they can ask questions about the product, that you can support them. Try to support them in any way possible. If there's something that they're not understanding about the product or your service, if there's a way that you can help them, please do. And try to open new channels for them to express their concerns, their questions, and also uh, share how they use the product as well. Online conferencing is something that of course, we all know that we are using right now because at the end of the day, that's a great resource for us. Um, so we have a couple of things that you can do. Like for example, this guide, we have divided it in terms of educated, engaged, attracting leads and monetize. Like if you're trying to attract new leads, you can do like, uh, you can host uh, networking events and you know start getting to know new people, start creating those type of encounters. Uh, and if you try to educate and engage, you can do webinars, you can do the live tutorials. Uh, this happy hours idea, I love it. Why not? That's Let, let's favorite. have one after this webinar. Yeah, like why not? Um, and also here we have this guide of different tools that you can use and uh, a couple of, uh, of their features. And uh, well, here we have prepared, uh, this is a handout for you guys, all, everyone that is attending to this webinar. We have created this marketing response checklist uh, during this COVID times, uh, just to make sure that you guys can have a, a place where you can start um, because there are so many things, everything is really overwhelming right now. So you can uh, just make sure that you take all these and start checking boxes and see if you're covering all those points. Hey guys, you know what? If you're able to actually follow these and check those boxes, I think we're go you're gonna be in a very good, position you know you're gonna be in a very good place if you're able to actually you know check the boxes of messaging on optimizing your online listings communicating to cons to customers through email optimizing SEO you're gonna be in a very good place if you are able to to follow those this is the research that or research that you all be receiving so you don't have yeah. to uh, have to focus on all of them at the same time right now don't worry and guys, we have a gift for you. It's a free template of a one-page marketing plan that we've been sharing on our workshops and webinars. Um, and it is available on our website for you guys to download. So download it and hopefully it can help you too. At least in one page, it's not substituting like a, a full plan, but in one page, you can actually have focus and start mapping out your next move from a marketing perspective. The idea is to make it simple and just to help you figure out what's your next marketing move in an easy, really easy way. So go to followbrandsagency.com uh, for you guys to download it. And also we encourage you guys to keep in touch with us 
go to and join our online uh, private Facebook group, Grow Your Brand Online. Look for it on Facebook, look it up, Grow Your Brand Online, where we are going to be sharing best practices, tips and tricks, and some resources. Where we are already. We are already. Yeah. So yeah, it's a really good resource. Uh, we have a lot of small business owners, marketers there. Um, what we do is basically we share uh, any new Facebook algorithm updates, any new thing that you know uh, we think that you guys should be aware of. Uh, and yeah, we discuss new updates, new information, so we all uh, get um, we all stay in touch. And finally, guys, so we want to share with you a free marketing advice. So we this is just our way of you know. Uh, uh, showing that we care and being for you guys for small business and entrepreneurs. So it is a free marketing consultation. You can book half an hour with us and for free, 100% free, no catch. We're going to be discussing, you know, what are your current, uh, what's your current situation? What are you trying to accomplish? And just trying to either brainstorming something, right? We're not able to give you a full plan, even just brainstorming or listening to you because as business owners, as entrepreneurs, that's sometimes everything we need, right? Someone to actually understand where we're coming from and listen to us. So we're here to help. Uh, if you want to book that 30 minute session, just email at lisbeth at allobrandsagency.com. Yeah, and sometimes the strategy, it's in you, but you need someone to bounce ideas uh, too. And uh, we're here to help. We're here to hear you. Um, and, um, and yeah, like feel free to, to reach out. Hey guys. And now it's time for the Q&A. Thank you for your attention. Thank you guys so much. Uh, there was a lot of great information and resources there. Um, as we mentioned, we will be posting this um, webinar. So if, you guys, if anyone missed anything, then don't worry. We will post it. You can have a chance to review it again. So thank you so much. And we do have a couple of questions. So let's get into them. The first is from Yolanda Zhang. And she's asking, how to best strategize pivoting from in-person program offering to virtual ones. I've been offering free virtual classes for children for three weeks and captured a lot of interest. What's the best way to start generating revenue without seeming greedy? That's a great question and it's super important and relevant right now. So the first step, you got it right, right? You're trying to gain attention and offering what we call a lead magnet. By offering something free, something useful, that's way of you generating a lead magnet, right? So keep doing that, don't stop it. So what you're gonna do is to try to gain some uh, credibility, right? And just trying to engage with that, with that cold audience, with that new lead, in a way where, first of all, you need to have, you know, like your program, your monetization program in place. So you can offer the half an hour, or whatever you're offering advice, and if that person wants to, you know, uh, receive additional help, then you are there to help. Um, but the first step, you you don't want to put the cart before the horse, right? So the first or the horse before the cart, whatever, you know, that's it. So first step, continue to to offer what you're offering. So that way, when you come with your uh, uh, sensitive and coming from an empathy place of saying, hey guys, if you want additional support. I'm here to help. You can check out my plans or my fees or whatever. Um, that way you won't come across as insensitive because you were already adding value. And that's the first step for any other encounter. Yeah, I think adding value for that is uh, a really key word because uh, you mentioned greedy. And at the end of the day, when you're adding value, if you're really helping and you have empathy uh, at the bottom of your, at the top of your, of your strategy, um, you can definitely translate that feeling into something good and people can see the value you have. So I would say uh, we have seen a lot of business owners that have been afraid to offer their services uh, yeah. during these times because they think they could people could see them as greedy. But if you have a solution that someone is needing right now, if you, for example, have classes for children and uh, we, have, we, we have seen parents that are getting crazy with their children at home, they really need for them to be entertained with something that you're bringing a solution. You're not being greedy, like you're bringing in something that it can help them. So try to shift your mindset as well 
and think about how to help and how to create a solution during this difficult time to how to support your target audience. You know, from a messenger perspective, once you nail all that, just don't try to sound desperate, right? On the messaging. And that, then you need to go back to the messaging slide, a slide that we share with you, how to adapt your messaging. Don't come across desperate, just come across as you are, you want to help, and I have an offer for it. Great, thank you guys. Uh, another question is from Coco Chocolate. Any tips on how to get the same engagement feature on Facebook stories? For example, the ask me question feature isn't interactive on Facebook. Um, so how to get it on Facebook store? That was the question. Facebook yeah, I think so. Facebook stories, right? So how, the yeah, best engage. how to get engagement best. on Facebook stories. So the best way, because Facebook doesn't have the same features as Instagram stories, right? But the, the best way will always be to ask questions. Even though you don't have the sticker, like the poll or the question sticker on Facebook, you can still like ask some questions on it. And there's actually a formula uh, for stories for you if you're offering something or if you are um, trying to get engagement that we can share with you by email. Uh, basically, on what will be the number of stories to share and what to post on each one in order to generate uh, engagement and later on uh, conversion. But forget about the stickers, start asking questions, and videos would be a great way of getting engagement on Facebook stories. Sorry, although. Keep in mind that Facebook stories don't get the same level of engagement as Instagram stories. Yeah, well, and it starts as a general. Um, that uh, to get interactions and to actually get people to ask questions, you have to be remain constant with video creation and sharing stories yourself. Yeah. Was what I've seen a lot is some people start creating asking questions, and the community is like not used to asking questions, so they don't even know what to ask. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they are like caught off guard, and it's kind of hard. But if you're, for example, creating a couple of stories, like uh, before starting though, like before starting to spec any interaction, and you can start saying like, how did your business start or like how are you coping with this situation what type of new things have you been doing so like you already have like a topic in place and you're like giving people some context yeah. context of what is it that you do and then they can start an interaction maybe with like follow-up questions based on that topic that you were covering at first so it's you know connect before engaging or before expecting something first is the emotional connection and then you can expect something else. One of the, um, the questions that we got from um, online um, prior to the webinar was, which media would you say is the most effective for driving sales? For example, Instagram, Facebook, Google, et cetera. It would depend on where your customer, where your customer is, okay? And we manage lots of dollars on ad spend, and it doesn't matter if we are advertising on all of them because maybe some channels won't work. Yeah, and, so, it, and it's a tricky one because like for some uh, e-commerce brands, Instagram is great. For some B2B businesses, LinkedIn is, is awesome. So I guess the answer would depend on, on the type of business as well. Yeah, and the, and the product, right? Um, but you know what? Uh, Facebook ads, assuming you're a small business, right? Facebook ads is great for uh, um, conversion campaigns. For some uh, products, depending the value of the product and also the demographic, Snapchat right now is, is generating lots of conversion. Like a Snapchat, it's not that yet. Like right now, it's, it's, it's actually you know, generating lots of engagement and conversion. If your audience is there, remember. Exactly. Uh, so let's say for Snapchat, if your audience is say 18 to 25 years old, um, with low, uh, 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 um, acquisition power, right? So I don't know, let's say a product around the 25 to the $80 for the 18 to 25 years old, Snapchat might be a good, a good channel. Uh, Instagram stories though, if you want to advertise in one place on Facebook and using Facebook ads, we would say that you need to forget a little bit about being on, being on the Facebook feed and focus on the stories because right now everyone is on stories. Yeah. We're consuming a lot of stories right now, so it's a good strategy. Like I myself, I have uh, entered too many websites yeah. due to the click on the link with Instagram stories. Mm -hmm. So stories for sure. Well, okay, thank you so much. Stories. Yeah. 
<laughs> we actually had a follow-up and I just wanted to fit this last one in quickly. Um, so um, Yolanda had a follow-up question uh, regarding pricing. So how do I price virtual programs to my in-person ones with the current climate? Uh, I tr she said she tries to pay what you pay what you can model as a test and the price offered varied a lot. She was hoping to use this to help pick a fair price, but it wasn't very helpful because she, as she thought it would be, for example, the range she got for her class ranged from $0 per child to 50 and anywhere in between. Well, I would say, first of all, that uh, pay what you can is a really tricky model yeah. because um, at the end of the day, you ha you're running a business. So you have to know if your costs are covered first. So, you know, if you're doing it as a, a as an initiative to help, like as a general thing, like uh, if it, it's social responsibility, okay, that's amazing. Because then you don't care how much you, you make, right? But uh, if it's actually to continue your business, to support your business, support uh, your employees, the rent you have to pay to support yourself, uh, thinking as a business, then you definitely have to add a price. Uh, and what we mean by fair pricing, and we we um, we had it on uh, on the presentation, is to think about um, definitely how you can cover your costs, and uh, you should be able to make a profit out of it. So that calculation you should make it first, and uh, also yeah, look at your competitors, look what your target audience is, um, how much can they pay then you can figure out that based on how the market is behaving. But um, if it's not an initiative, a uh, social responsibility initiative, or if it's something that if you need, need, really need to make money out of this, I, I wouldn't advise uh, for you to use a pay what you can model. Do you have something to add to that? Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Jose and Elizabeth. You guys really presented such an insightful presentation given us a lot to think about um, and so as I've I mentioned this webinar was recorded so we're going to share the link to the webinar and we invite you um, to you know revisit the content yourself and share it with your network we will also be sharing um, the COVID-19 marketing response checklist which was created by Jose and Elizabeth so um, you guys will have access to that as well um, following the webinar you're also going to receive an evaluation where you can share with us your feedback and we'd really appreciate you taking a couple of minutes to complete that because it really helps us um, to um, as we plan more of these webinars going forward and you can also provide suggestions on future topics that you want us to cover um, we have a couple of upcoming webinars that i wanted to let you guys know about so next week we have a keeping healthy finances and credit after and during covid19 pandemic and that will be on April 23rd at 2 o'clock p.m. And there will be um, a webinar the week after that, which is moving your brick and mortar to online. And that will be on April 30th at 1 o'clock p.m. And you can find more information about all of our upcoming webinars um, by going to our website, accessccf.com. And I think um, Michael also shared the link to the um, webinar page. Um, so again, thank you so much, um, Jose and Elizabeth, uh, for taking the time to share with us today. And thank you for everyone that was able to come out um, and participate today. I hope yeah. you all have a great evening. Thank you for afternoon. the invitation, Terea. Our pleasure. Thank you. Bye. Bye.